Photoshop just introduced the biggest update it's ever had is completely mind blowing. And it's one of the biggest updates in the world of AI so far. In this video, I'll show you how to get this update and how to use it. I'll show you some really good use cases and it's going to change design forever. Photoshop has another AI tool called Firefly, but that is now built into Photoshop and that's how you could do the things I'm going to show you in this video. With this new Photoshop, you could actually edit your images using only text prompts. You could add objects where objects don't exist. You could even change the size of your image and stretch it out and it will fill in the rest for you. I'll put a link in the description to this website. This is basically the Adobe website, the company that makes Photoshop. And you could get the new Photoshop right from here and you could use the free trial. The option I'm going to show you is called Generative Fill. It's still in beta, but you could actually download right now the version of Photoshop that's in beta and use it just like you would with the regular Photoshop. And maybe if you watch this later, it's going to be in the regular release and not just beta. Then it's going to take you to Creative Cloud and we need to actually download the beta app. So if you get the Creative Cloud app, you could go to the app section here and there's a whole section for beta apps. Right now, the Photoshop beta that I'm going to show you with this AI tool is going to be in beta. So I'm going to go ahead and install it right over here. I have a few different images open so I could show you a few different things with this new AI tool inside of Photoshop. So right here, let me go to this tool right here. So you have a couple of different selection tool. You've always had these. So I'll choose this lasso tool and I'm going to just kind of draw around these ships. I'm not even going to do a really good job. I'm just going to draw. So some mountains are selected, right? So I'll just go ahead and close this up and then you'll get this menu here. It says generative fill. I'm going to click this and you're going to get a text box here and then you could generate anything you want in this box by describing it. But here I'm just going to say remove to remove these two ships. So that's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to generate anything new. I'll show you that in a second. And it's going to process and look what it does. And look at this. It just created a new layer for me. You put a little island over here. And as you can see, it says generative layer. So it's its own layer. I could turn it on and off. So it's not destructive to my original image. That is a very important element that they had added here. And anytime if I decide to remove this here, I could do the lasso tool again. I have a selected. So I'll draw around this. And this time I'll just press remove what it just created. So I'll do generative and I'll press remove. And then I'll see what it generates this time. And look at that. Both those ships are completely removed. And there used to be an option called content aware fill. This just blows it away. This is not even comparable to the content aware. And I'll turn this off and you also get a couple of different options. So here, if I didn't like what this island looked like, I could actually see what the other variations of it are. And if you look at the background, it's even changed the shape of the mountains. It's added a little bit more, but very ultra realistic way to remove objects. You could even change surfaces. So in this case, I'm going to select this object. So I'll select this object right over here. I'll click on it and I'm going to invert the selection right here. It has that option. So it's going to select everything but the apple and I'm going to generate this and I'm going to say marble surface and it's put the apple on a whole different surface for me and I could actually choose different variations here and it's going to show me those variations. This time I'm going to change the apple to an orange. And it's given me three different variations of what an orange would look like. Again, I started with an apple on a wooden tabletop. I changed it to marble and I changed the actual fruit in just text prompts. Now with this image, I'm going to create things that are not even there yet. So I'm going to choose the lasso tool and I'm going to lasso around this area right here. And I want to kind of change this mountain top. So I'm going to go ahead and generate fill. And I'm going to write snowy mountains. I'm going to press generate over here to replace this area. And look at that. It created this really realistic snowy mountain for me. And again, I have multiple different variations to choose from. And I did not even select the end of it. So it's trying to keep the end and still give me something that looks very realistic. Here, I'm going to draw right over here and I'm going to say sailboat. And here's a sailboat. Again, I got a couple of different variations and I could even select the entire parts of the sky. Let's say I don't like these clouds. So I could type cloud to generate different types of clouds. And here I got a whole different types of stylized cloud. Again, if I don't like it, I could press generate again to get a whole set of new ideas too. And this last thing I'm going to show you might be the most impressive option inside of Photoshop now. So I could actually choose the crop tool here and extend my canvas. So I'm going to press C, choose the crop tool, and I'm going to make this much longer. So I get a whole different size image, right? 
Now, by default, there is nothing over here, but look at this. I'm gonna choose this selection tool and I'm gonna select this area right over here. Then I'm gonna press generated fill here using the AI and I'm not gonna type in anything this time. I'm gonna let it figure out what should be here, right? So it has to figure out what kind of shoes maybe this person is wearing, but check this out. And look at the details. It extended the legs, it created shoes. They don't look that great, but it created the rest of the ground. It created the rest of the table. And what I could do next is maybe I just don't like the shoes. So I'll select the shoes and I'm gonna say work boots and generate that. And just like that, it's created these work boots for me. And I could again, test out different variations of it. And I could even turn this layer off. Again, it's non-destructive, meaning it doesn't do anything to your original image, it's still there. So this opens up Photoshop to be a much more powerful tool and much more accessible to people that don't know much about design. So I'm really excited about it. We're also finishing an entire platform to learn AI, a Netflix style education platform for AI which includes individual tutorials and entire courses on things like Photoshop AI as it comes out and things like Mid Journey and a whole lot more creative tools and AI tools to make you a lot more productive in your personal and work life. Let me know what you think of this update and I will see you on the next video.